Okay, I felt like I was rushing there at the end of that uh, normal distribution discussion, so I'm going to add a second one here because that's not something you really want to rush through. So I was just showing you uh, what different values of kurtosis mean. So there are a lot of ways to, to tell whether uh, distribution is a normal distribution or not. One is just by looking at at the histogram you can kind of tell does it kind of look like it could be a normal distribution or not so uh, this is a histogram of some randomly generated normally distributed numbers and so uh, this is a normal distribution uh, and this is a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one this is what we call a standard normal distribution and so 68 percent of the data will be within minus one and plus one because one standard deviation is equal to plus or minus one the standard deviations one plus or minus two you're gonna have about 95 percent between plus and minus two uh, and what does that mean well there's five percent that's not between plus or minus two two and a half percent on the right side and then the other two and a half percent on the left side roughly speaking and then between plus and minus three you'll have 99.72% of the data, which leaves only about 0.28%, or about 0.14% on the right and 0.14% on the left. But again, 68% in the middle, 32% not in the middle, which means about 16% on the right side to the right of positive one, and about 16% to the left of negative one. Right? Now, so you can just look at a distribution and, and get a, a general idea, but it's, it's actually hard to tell just by looking. So we calculate things like kurtosis. And again, a kurtosis of zero, or a standardized kurtosis of zero. Don't worry about what that means. You calculate the kurtosis in a statistics program. If it says it's zero, that's an indication that it could be a normal distribution as well. It means that it has the same amount of roundedness, this black one is the normal distribution. Uh, also calculate the skewness. A skewness of zero means that the, the shape is symmetric, just like a normal distribution should be. It doesn't guarantee it's a normal distribution, but there are a lot of ways to check, a lot of different and a lot of different informal ways to check as well. Now, Let's look at some other normal distributions here that I graphed in this program called Maple. This red is a normal distribution. This is a standard normal distribution as well. And the green is a normal distribution, but it's not a standard normal. The mean of the green normal distribution is uh, 0.5. And I believe the standard deviation, let me look real quick. The standard deviation of the green one is only 0.3. Still a normal distribution but the area is in a much tighter area because the standard deviation is different. So the only two parameters, the only two things you need to know about a normal is the mean and the standard deviation. Now if you, uh, sometimes you, you use the t-distribution instead and as we'll see later, you use the t-distribution when you don't know what the population standard deviation is and you have to use a sample standard deviation. So here I've plotted a normal distribution which is red and a green distribution, which is a T distribution, with four degrees of freedom. The main difference between a T and a normal is that there's, we say it's fatter in the tail. Fatter in the tail and a little shorter in the middle. There's a higher probability of being out in the tails on a T distribution. But as the uh, sample size gets higher, the uncertainty about the standard deviation goes down and the t and the normal get closer and closer and closer to each other. So I just wanted to show you that. A couple other important things to, of note about the normal distribution here. If I can find the right uh, handout. Okay, I have it on here on my other screen. Uh, make sure you know, as I mentioned before, every normal distribution has two parameters, the mean and the standard deviation. A standard normal has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. The formula for the height of a normal distribution is this ugly formula here. It's very rarely used because it just tells you the height. It doesn't tell you anything about probabilities. So it's, it's actually 
uh, mathematically true that there is no formula that c exists or can be derived. Uh, sometimes you'll hear mathematicians say there is no closed form solution for the integral under the normal distribution. That means there's no formula you can plug in, I mean in a standard deviation to, that will give you areas under the normal curve, which is what you want in practice when you're using the normal distribution. So we use tables. There are a lot of different versions of a normal distribution table. Uh, it's much more common these days to use a statistics program like Excel. I'll show you how to do this in R later. Uh, but if you do norms dist z and you put in a z-score, it'll give you the area below that z-score. Or norms env and then a probability, it'll give you the z-score that uh, leaves that probability less than. Okay, so, so what's a z-score? The formula for a z-score, z equals some number minus the mean, minus that center of the uh, normal distribution that you're looking at, or any distribution really, but we're thinking about the normal here, divide it by the standard deviation. That calculates how many standard deviations some number is from the mean. Let me give you an example. Um, the average length of a pregnancy is 280 days, and uh, it's either 280 or 266, depending on when you start counting the pregnancy. Uh, some people, most doctors will use 280, and that's from the uh, date of the first cycle uh, a woman has uh, after their last period. And the standard deviation of the length of a pregnancy is 16 days. What does that mean? Well, that means that most babies are born somewhere within 16 days of their due date, which is 280 days after the beginning. Uh, but, but suppose a baby was born uh, after 250 days. What is the z-score? Well, you would take the 250 days, so 250 minus the mean, 280, and divide that, that's going to be negative 30, divide that by 16, and let's see what the z-score is. So minus 30 uh, divided by 16, gives us 1.875 equals 1.875. Sorry, negative. The negative tells you that the 250 is less than the mean. The 1.875 tells us that this number of days is almost but not quite two standard deviations, two of these 16s earlier than the mean. So almost two standard deviations less than the mean. Now what can we do with that one negative 1.875? 1 well, let's go to a normal distribution table. Okay, this is a table that I created in Excel um, using those functions we looked at a minute ago, but uh, there are a couple different types of tables. This is a cumulative normal distribution table. And what you do is you uh, look, this is similar to the way most tables work, the first two digits of the uh, z-score that you calculate are here, and we calculated a, a z-score for that last example of minus 1.875. Now for this table and most tables, you need to round that off to two decimal places, so we'd call that minus 1.88 to round that properly. Then we go back to our table, and the first two digits are minus 1.8, and then across the top here of the table you see the second decimal place 0 .00, 0 .01, 0 .02, da, da, etc. 0 .08 because 8 is also the second decimal place so if we look up minus 1.8 8 on this table it tells us that the probability that a baby is born earlier than a z-score of minus 1.88 or less than that day is 0 .0301 or about 3%. So if we go back and look at a graph of a normal distribution here, that's the red one, if we looked right here at minus 1.8, again that's telling us that there's about 3% in area in this left tail, 3%. Now if we went over to minus 2, a, a z-score of minus 2, there would not be 3% in that tail, there would be only about 
as we talked about just a minute ago. So that's how you use a table. Something else to that we needed to review here. Okay, in the last few seconds I have left, let me uh, mention something about uh, Gauss, De Moivre, and Galton, uh, who are historical figures associated with the normal distribution. Some people credit uh, Gauss, the famous, math famous mathematician, for uh, deriving the normal distribution, and some people call it a Gaussian distribution in his honor. Uh, but a Frenchman named De Moivre uh, actually discussed how a lot of things have this bell-shaped distribution a lot earlier, I believe. And uh, Sir Francis Galton, who was a cousin of Darwin, also was famous for measuring things and making histograms. And if you want to see something that Galton invented called a quinsunx in action, go to this link and it'll show you how a normal dis distribution forms randomly.